The American workplace has changed drastically over the last 100 years, and labor numbers are finally showing it. Women are working now more than ever, holding a record 79 million jobs. And the percentage of women in their prime working years who are employed stands at just under 78%. But we can't take a victory lap yet. With some much progression, there is still room for growth, and it falls on women to do it themselves. Career coach Liz Bentley joins us now to talk about the changes that need to be made made for women to truly advance. Good to see you, Liz. Good morning. Hey, Mary. It's great to see you, too. In this day and age, most women are doing double duty, working a full-time job, and then taking care of the home. How has this affected their growth potential? So first, it's just great to see so many women in the workplace. And the flux of women coming in has definitely been because of hybrid and flexible work environments, allowing women with young children to be in the workplace and get their, their foot in the game, which is fantastic. However, it's also exhausting because while women are trying to do this work, they're also feeding children, attending their needs, driving them to events, and they're really feeling overwhelmed. It's hard for them to keep focused, stay on track with gold and they find themselves doing work after putting kids to bed at night which obviously leads it makes it very hard for them to advance and as, as quickly as the men are doing and what we're seeing is the main struggle is coming because they do not have equality at home just like they're struggling with it in the workplace they're struggling with equality at home for two main reasons one because they're not having it with their spouse where men are doing more work in home than their fathers and in the past, it still may only lead up to 10 to 20 percent of the actual work, it's leaving it all on the women or most of it on the women. And the second is with society. We're finding that schools and communities are often asking for women to volunteer and help out and run events. Schools are also calling women far more than they're calling the men, even when they both have jobs. So just putting a lot more pressure on the women and a lot more burden on them to succeed. And Liz, you say subconscious gender bias remains a major hurdle for women, but it turns out sometime it comes from other women? It's so interesting, Mary, because obviously we do see gender bias coming from men, but we're also seeing it from women, and it's coming from an unconscious place. So women, if you talk to them, will say, I'm pro-women, I try to support women as much as I can. And while they're doing that in their conscious, in their unconscious, they're often sabotaging them, not recognizing it. So our gender stereotypes come from the first 10 years of our lives. This is our imprinting years. So if you were raised, for example, in the 1970s, your gender stereotype comes from that time. And so that thinking is still trailing you even though we're in 2024 and coming up unconsciously. And what I often see is that women will have a different set of standards than they do for men. For example, at Yale, they did a study on women promoting promoting men and women to the next leadership level. And women were more often to promote men than women, even when they had the exact same resumes. And workplace bullying has also been brought up as a major concern among women, and it can sometimes be very subtle. So what are the effects of this microaggression in the workplace? So what we see is that women bully other women 65% more of the time than they bully men. And it comes out in undermining them in meetings, excluding them from projects, giving them pressure or threatening their jobs. And also they do it in covert ways, spreading rumors about them, giving them peer pressure, creating social, social isolation, really making it hard on women sometimes and not getting that camaraderie from the women they wish they were getting. Mm. And one way for women to combat these hurdles, you say, is to build workplace friendships. How important is it to have someone on your side that you can truly trust? Oh, it's so important, and it's so important to women. Women feel it's women want workplace friendships 42% of the time compared to men at 34%. And they really have it. They find that it's easier to navigate the politics, get the support in their life, have fun at work and enjoy getting to work to see someone they really care about. It's also helpful for them if they off ramp for a period of time and then want to get back into the workplace so they can network with the other women. And at a time where the Surgeon General is saying that loneliness is at an all time high, it's really good to have friendships at work and also really good for companies because people who like coming to work because they have friendships there are going to be a lot more loyal to your company. Career coach Liz Bentley, thank you so much. That's such good information for us. We really appreciate it.